Not as steamy as it was earlier. Nope. It's got a little bit in there. It's a tiny bit, but not as much as the first little go around. You can hear it clicking. Yeah. Well, that's not, not bad. <laughs> My gun, she clicks. It's uh, it's definitely warm now. It's definitely hot here. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. A few months ago, I did a reintroduction to the Zestava M70, and the reason why I did that is because the rifle that I purchased a few months ago was different than my original M70 that I had several years ago. That's a good thing. Uh, so I talked about some of the differences in uh, that video and I'll leave a card at the end if you guys are interested in catching up with that. But at the end of the day, that rifle had some beautiful wood furniture on it and I just couldn't see myself taking it to the range day in and day out and beating up that furniture. So I went ahead and decided to change some things up. At this point, I've got about 500 rounds through the M70 and I wanted to provide you guys with an update of not only what's going on under the hood, but also my experience shooting it and what I have discovered about this rifle in the meantime. So let's talk about that. First though, what is your favorite upgrades to AK? Sound off in the comment section down below. I'm kind of a uh, traditionalist. I like to keep my rifles pretty much the same, but I'm not opposed to upgrading them should the, uh, you know, desire hit me. I've done a number of different things when it comes to polishing some of the insides up, changing out triggers, putting new furniture set on, and so on and so forth, and I love every bit of that, but I wanna hear what you guys say. Sound off in the comment section down below. Okay, so let's talk about the M70 as it stands right now. Like I said, I didn't want to mess with the furniture, so I've turned it into a space AK. <laughs> Full disclosure, this stuff was sent to me by JMAC Customs. I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent. Along with the rifle as well, I purchased the rifle myself. So again, not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent about Zestava. But at the very least, I wanted to check out the new furniture set that, that JMAC Customs offers. Talk about my experience about that and um, let you know how the rifle's running. So first and foremost, let's get into it. Uh, 500 rounds through this. It's not a lot of rounds, but I did put 250 of those rounds through it as quickly as I possibly could on a range day. About 120-ish rounds through the first iteration, had to reload the mags, and then another 130 rounds uh, after that. So I was able to get it heated up really, really good and was able to, uh, you know, break it in, really. Uh, From there, I have ran it through a two-gun competition and then also had it out the range just the other day to run about another 100 or so rounds through it. So that puts me at or over 100 rounds, and let me tell you, I could not be happier. This thing has been running great. No failures to feed, fire, or eject, which is exactly what you would expect from a pretty good manufacturer when it comes to Zestava. They've been around a long time. So let's get into that. Um, the biggest thing that I was mostly impressed with when it came to this rifle is how straight it is. Uh, what does that mean? Well, if you're not familiar with uh, AKs, one of the most critical pieces of assembling one of these rifles is pressing the barrel into the receiver. And if you don't do it correctly, you can actually cant that barrel to the left or to the right just ever so slightly before it gets pinned. What that ends up doing, and what you'll see with a lot of people who actually zero their iron sights, is the front sight will be pushed all the way to the left or all the way to the right. This has the factory zero. I have not zeroed it one bit. I'll get you a close-up picture of the front sight drum so you can see there's no marring on that to indicate that it's been zeroed. 
and I was able to hit at 125 yards with the factory zero during the two gun competition. Now, the video that I have does not show the targets and I do apologize for that, but there were four targets that required two rounds each starting at 50 yards and going all the way to 125 yards. So you'll just have to take my word for it. I am working on making sure that my GoPro is set up a little bit better so you guys can see what's going on. I think we're gonna mount it a little bit different than I normally do. So there you go, uh, first 500, no problem. So let's take a look underneath the hood and show you what's going on. Uh, first and foremost, the recoil spring is doing the recoil spring. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's looking pretty good. I have not cleaned anything, so you are seeing 500 rounds of dirtiness inside this rifle, and I will not clean this rifle until I'm done with at least 1,000 rounds, just to show you guys what the wear pattern is going to be looking like. Here is the uh, bolt and carrier. The bolt's looking pretty good, I would say. If you see something, definitely let me know down in the comment section down below. I would appreciate that. But uh, the carrier and the bolt look pretty good. And then that front trunnion is looking pretty good as well. If there is any wear, um, especially like on the carrier, that might be from the uh, new furniture set, but I'm not seeing anything uh, that would alarm me. So there is that. Okay, so let's dive into the new furniture. Like I mentioned, the original was just too beautiful to mess up, so I didn't really um, want to continue to beat it up anymore. So JMAC Customs reached out to me and said, hey, we've got this new handguard. It's called the MMS. Would you be interested in taking a look at it? And I said, absolutely. So they went ahead and sent me the handguard, this hand stop, and then the railed uh, gas tube as well. Let me tell you, this system that they've got is super simple to install. Uh, they have a bracket down here that fits up against the receiver and then everything bolts down right around that. The handguard bolts to that bracket, the gas tube then bolts down to the bracket on top as well. So everything is secured right back here. No fitting is required. There's no dremeling or anything like that. That's something I really did like. So someone that's like myself, who's a mouth breathing, knuckle dragging Neanderthal, if, if I can do it, you guys can too. So there is that. Now, will that mess anything up as far as harmonics goes? I didn't notice any types of uh, impact shifts for uh, point of aim, point of impact. Of course, naturally, I still have the factory zero on this, so there, there is that. Take that as you will. Another great thing about the MMS handguard, especially for the Yugo pattern rifles, is over here, you can see that it's covering up that handguard retaining bracket. That's something I really do like because that allows you uh, the ability to not worry about burning your hand on that thing if you're putting a lot of rounds through it. Now, if you're if you're going to be cranking out like, you know, four or five magazines all at once, yeah, it's definitely going to get hot. And that's what I experienced in the first 250 rounds that I put through this. I put that 250 through as fast as I possibly could. Got about 120 rounds through the first batch, had to reload the mags well, not, and then put another uh, 130 ish rounds through oh gun, the second clicks. batch. It's, so uh, yeah, by the time I got done with that, it, it was really, really hot. I had to hold the mag uh, to get the uh, rest of the rounds put through it, but that was for me to break it in. That's a little two-step shuffle right there. Yeah. That is hot. Whew. Outside of that, just running it in competition, you know, doing one, two, maybe even a third uh, mag change. I didn't notice anything. Uh, I didn't really concern myself with wearing a glove or anything like that. So let's put a few more rounds down range and see how it goes. My target's getting ready to fall over. <laughs> nice. Oh man, I love this. This rifle has been so much fun to shoot. Again, just putting a 
30 round magazine through this and still I can hold this with my hand even with the uh, gas tube right here bare hand holding it no problem that is something I really really do like again is it is it right for you I don't know um, but it does give you plenty of rail space for you to add you know a light for home defense or maybe you want to set this up for um, you know a night vision capable rifle you've got plenty of M lock for IR devices or even this uh, railed gas tube you could put it up there as well but that's kind of up to you I did run a red dot on this gas tube hoping that it would heat up and fry the electronics on the inside of it as a torture test and it didn't do it so um, yeah it gets hot but uh, at least that red dot stood the test yeah. of time so and it was just a yeah. really inexpensive well, Amazon the red dot too, so, so there's that uh, all right so let's move on back uh, I did swap out the uh, pistol grip here for just a polymer Zestava pistol grip that was at the local shop cost me like five bucks or something um, I really do like it it's pretty comfortable it has a cutout right here for your thumb makes it pretty comfortable for uh, me to to run that so feels feels really good there I got pretty small hands so the smaller pistol grips fit my hand a little bit better as well uh, in addition to that we've got the uh, triangle folder here this is set up real easy as well uh, you just take that bolt out of the buttstock and apply the Picatinny section again super simple to install uh, and then adding the triangle folder is pretty easy as well so as you can see here you just press up from the bottom and it folds over should you have an optic it's going to give you enough room to do that which is something I really do like there is some spring tension here so it does kind of hold itself close to the rifle it does not lock so there is that I don't know if that's something you like or dislike once you uh, flip it out and lock it into place good thing about it is it's not going to go anywhere. So that's something I really do like about that. Uh, pretty comfortable. I will say that it is steel on your cheek. So uh, I would recommend the cheek riser on this, regardless if it's the very low profile or the higher one, one of the cheek risers you're going to want on there. Uh, nice rubberized butt pad on here. So that's pretty nice. And it has some QD mounts on the butt stock to allow you to place slings at the back or up closer to the receiver same with the MMS it's got um, QD points right here for a sling as well so I kind of like the um, whole setup that I've got going on here uh, obviously I need to put a lot more rounds through it to see if I continue to enjoy it but at the end of the day it has done me very well and I've had a lot of fun with it so is it right for you I don't know cost on this uh, with the gas tube the MMS handguard the triangle folder the pick section for the receiver or the rear trunnion area um, you're, you're looking you're looking 500 plus dollars so it's not cheap you know it's a lot cheaper than Zeneco sure but um, you know for someone who's just kind of scraping by that may not be what you need so just keep that in mind and uh, if if jmac could do anything i would like to see them kind of be a little bit more competitive with their pricing but at the same time i also know they produce some really really good solid solid um components for your ak so there you have it there is the rundown uh pretty down and dirty as to what's going on with this rifle i have absolutely enjoyed it 100% and I'm going to continue to enjoy this thing. We're going to get this up to a thousand rounds and let you guys take another peek underneath the hood so you can see what kind of wear patterns we're looking at. I don't expect to find anything out of the ordinary. In addition to that, I'm also going to uh, get some go no go gauges for you guys so we can check head spacing as well. Again, I don't expect anything to happen with this rifle, so uh, we're just going to check it out here in you know a few weeks month or so after I get another 500 rounds through it so there you have it there is the Zestava M70 it is been one of my favorite rifles for a long time and uh, this newer one is performing just as well also 
Naturally, with it being a Yugo pattern rifle, there is going to be some compatibility uh, issues when it comes to finding some aftermarket support, but we are seeing an increase of aftermarket support from the likes of JMAC Customs, RS Regulate, Midwest Industries, so on and so forth. So I really do appreciate those companies stepping up and giving us options for a uh, kind of eclectic AK, as it were. With all that being said, thank you so very much for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate everybody who is commenting, liking, sharing. If you guys are not subscribed to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that as well. If you wanna financially support the channel, there's a tip jar or you can become a member of the channel. I will have uh, behind the scenes uh, videos for members who uh, want to see what's coming up with the channel, uh, new things that are coming into the channel. I'll give videos on that as well. So become a member and check that out. With all that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks again so very much. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.